Hi, this is Greg Koopman. In this video, I'm going to show you how to extract data from AWS S3 files and to a Redshift table. Before we continue, though, I want to just point out that there's three other accompanying videos that have to do with the same aspect um, of a bigger picture. I divided them up into uh, four separate videos um, so it's easier pe for people to view as needed. Um, but the, these four really do go together. Uh, the other three, which is deleting files from S3, uh, deleting S3 files, deleting S3 uh, Talon files from a Talon server, and the other one is um, extracting data from a SQL server into the S3 files. Uh, all three of these uh, make up uh, the whole picture of moving data from one source to another. The video you're about to watch is the fourth video of this series and uh, it, it describes the, the final part where the data is transferred from an S3 file into the Redshift table. And with that, let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so now we're in the package in Talent. And as you see, there's only two components. It's a very simple package. Um, it's just configuring it. It has to be exact, otherwise it won't work. Uh, so let's just look at it, the components. Number one, you have your DB connection, which in this case is Redshift. Okay, so here's my Redshift cluster. All right, my port. Look at the um, double quotes. My database, dev. My schema, data lake my username AWS user and my password which I am not giving to you of course so but when you go in there if you do fill out your password when you do fill out your password make sure you have double quotes around it okay if you don't have double quotes around it that will cause an error and that's how there is to the connection okay let's go to the next object so once the connection is established our S3, let's point out that our, our S3 files are already up on the server. Okay. So let's just jump over to the S3 server. And as you see, I have four files here. Fact Sales 0, Fact Sales 1, Fact Sales 2, and Fact Sales 3. Now these could come from an outside source who drops it on my server, who will give, give permission to drop it on the server. Or it could be coming internally, like in this case, I generated these four files internally and I pulled them from a SQL server, which you can see in a different video. But um, so these files are already set up, and um, well, let's just go ahead and look at one of them just to make sure we know. We're going to download this. So, as you see, the structure of the file uh, is delimited by pipes, and these pipes, let's give you a better view of the data by going into here and going into text to columns delimited next make the delimiter pipe okay and now we can see the data okay so here's a data nothing spectacular but that's the format okay so obviously and I'm bringing in the header in this case so what I want to point out is that if I go in and look at the structure of the data I'm importing it into, they have to be the same exact structure. And, the date, and where I'm going to import it is over here on my Redshift um, da database, fact sales. And as you see, these column names are the same as the data I'm bringing in from that uh, file structure. Okay, that has to be that is probably the hardest part of the whole thing after you configure it is to make sure your schemas are the same uh, all the way down to the data types okay that will give you more errors than anything but if all your data is clean um, you can bring it in and you can then just dump it in here from the S3 file okay so so now we're back at our talent job so how do we bring that in? Well, we bring it in through this object called DB Bulk Exec. This is the name of it in Talon Open Studio. In your enterprise edition of Talon, it's probably called something more like T Red Shift, right? And Bulk Execute Risk Guy here, right? That's what it's called. That's when you bring it in, even in Talon Open Studio. It just happens to change the name once it gets it in here. I don't know why it does that, but that's what it does. 
Okay, so let's click on there and let's look at the way the component is set up. Okay, we're in the component setup for this, and as you see, I have my um, I use an existing connection, which is this connection here for my Redshift. Uh, it's called TDB Connection One. Uh, the table name you have to put in the table name. The name of the table is Fact Sales. I don't need to put in any certain action if it's already established, but you have these other options here. Okay, the data source is coming from S3. All right, and here is my uh, when it comes to S3, you have to have credentials for S3. So my S3 credentials are uh, an access key here, my secret key, okay, which is just like your password, um, but for AWS, you got to fill that in between the quotes. My bucket, which in this case is GC-ETL, and my key, which I put in XFFER, X for out, which is a folder name, forward slash, and then the name of the file, or the prefix of the file. So since I have four files waiting for me that were split as I brought that data in uh, to S3, it was, um, or when I created it as delimited files, uh, but by the time I got to S3, it came in like four different files. Um, I have to give it a prefix because as you noticed on the, let me just go back there and you'll notice that there's an appending uh, integer at the end of each of the fact sales. As you see here, zero, one, two, three. And this could go on for thousands of files, whatever it was, but you, what you want to need is that that prefix that fact sales where it starts there and that's what you put in there you know in this case you don't have to put an asterisk in some component settings you have to use an asterisk to wildcard it but this is you calls it a prefix and it uses it this is a start uh, starting with type of thing okay so that's how you fill this out advanced settings there's my advanced settings um, this should be a pipe and in this advanced settings, um, your data format, I usually set that to auto and time format to auto. Uh, ignore header. I need to say one, which is true. Ignore the header, right? We don't want the bring in the header. That's going to cause problems. Uh, and I also put blanks. If something comes in as a blank, I, I, set, I let it uh, set it in the database to null. Okay, but there's a lot of other properties here you can set as you need to. Uh, trim blanks. There's many different things here, so you can investigate that on your own. Um, but these are my settings. Uh, I don't have it. Um, it's not my text is not enclosed by double quotes or anything like that. So I set it to empty. But you can set it to double quote or something else. Um, and that's it. That's all I have for this. Um, I had the delimited type for CSV and dynamic settings. I don't have anything in view. I don't have anything in documentation. I don't have anything. So what you have to do here is just, there's, when you go into the schema, there's no schema. It's expecting that the schema is perfect. You don't have to, you don't have a change here. You just have to make sure that your S3 and the way you um, have set it up and got the data in there, that that data is in the format that it's going to work. And like I say, these extra settings, these extra advanced settings, these can help you get through some of the, some of, some of the on the fly. Um, movement of that data if, there, if it isn't perfect. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is he go ahead and run this job and see what happens. Before we run it though, what I want to do is go over to data grip and take a look what's in that file. Okay. So when we look at it, We, as you see, I just ran it, and there's no data in that file. Okay, I do account should be zero. Zero is account. Okay, so there's no data in the in the file. So what we're expecting is that those three, four files to come over, uh, which I already 3,500 rows. There's a thousand rows per file. Uh, then this last file is has 500 rows. So let's go ahead and run this. And it's running now so it's importing those 3500 rows from
from the S3 file system to the Redshift table. Okay, that finished. All right, so it took um, less than a minute, or about a minute. Uh, started at 7.25 and then ended at 7.26. So that's it. So basically, let's go take a look at the data, see if it got over there. So I'm going to do a select count, which as we see is 3,500 rows. And we take a look at a, a hundred of those, sample a hundred of those. Okay, so it looks like the data came over well. And that's it. That's how you move data from an S3 file, to, or files, to a Redshift table. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this video.